Hello everybody, welcome back to Stone Magpie for a whip and chat. I have got my trusty little friend here holding the claw ready for when we get to any AB diamonds that we need. So he might be a bit in the way there. So I will pop him there perhaps and see how we get on. <laughs> I do love them. I think he looks great. He looks like he's weightlifting. I think they're so fab. If you didn't see my unboxing for the storage ideas for your diamond pens, then do catch that because he and his friend Mr. Blue were the stars of that video. <laughs> Mr. Blue isn't quite worked out well enough yet to hold the diamond pen, so he's still in training. <laughs> so he's going over here. <laughs> right, let's get started on this elation kit from Dreamer Designs. Oh, I feel like I haven't done a whip and chat with elation for ages. So I chose this one rather than the Diamond Art Club kit that I've also got on the go. So I hope you're pleased to see Elation again. And I will give you an overview at the end of the video so you can see what's been happening on this one. I'm using my Spring Flower Diamond Pen, which I was using on Spring Stream. And I've put some new wax in so it might leave a little bit of debris, which I'll have to tidy up as I go along. We'll see. And I'm not used to doing multi-placing on this canvas because it is so confetti heavy that I think I'm a bit out of practice on the rounds. <laughs> anyway, I will continue. As you can see, I did start this section previously. So for my competitive friends out there that like to take me on in finishing a section during a whip and chat I've had a head start so no 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 <laughs> I have said before that I am competitive um so if you're trying to beat me then yeah I'm a bit of a cheat as well <laughs> but no this one is quite confetti heavy so and I am trying to talk and be interesting <laughs> at the same time so I think I deserve a little bit of an advantage and I hope that you agree too <laughs> I have a really good excuse because I have stories to tell today oh it, do you know it does feel quite a while since I did a whip and chat and I don't know when the last one was I don't think I did one for last week so perhaps it's a couple of weeks ago it feels like a long time anyway, but then I have been extremely busy at work this week. So you may know if you watch my channel regularly that I do have a full-time job. I work in accounts, <laughs> still don't quite know how that happened, but I do. And um, of course, it's been our year end this month. So we've had to do a stock take and I work in, it's like a safety industry very responsible you know <laughs> and um yeah so we do like servicing equipment and things like that so the parts department has all sorts of screws nuts bolts as, as you can imagine and yes every single one in the whole building had to be counted um so i didn't do it all by myself i'm not taking all the credit but being in accounts, I needed to input all of the figures and things like that, as well as count up some of the different parts. And yeah, when you open a cupboard and you're faced with lots of these little bins full of, you know, technical things. <laughs> I think half the battle was trying to find out what these parts were. Never mind actually counting them and then ticking them off the list, etc. So, yes, it was a long process. <sighs> and there is still a little bit to do, to be fair. I, to tell the truth, there's still a little bit to get through. But, yeah, the majority was done last week. And, yeah, I didn't get any diamond painting done. I was absolutely whacked when I got home from doing that this week. 
So that's been my week, apart from the week before going on holiday for a few days to Whitby. Oh, I've got some things to show you about our little time away. We went away for a few nights just to get some seaside air. Um, Whitby is in North Yorkshire where I live, so it's probably about an hour away, that's all. But it's just such so nice to get um, a fresh view and a bit of sea air, isn't it? So we really enjoyed our time away. And I did take some little snippets of videos to share with you, which will, I will intersperse throughout the video for you to see. Um, so you can see a little bit of Whitby itself. Not much, you know, just to give you an idea. So I'm just making sure that I've, I'm trying to get every little bit of colour in as I go along, rather than swapping and changing. So I might be a little bit hesitant at times to make sure that I'm catching all the colours here, because this elation kit is confetti heavy. It is by Anne-Marie Bone, and if you've not seen my videos on this one before, then do have a little look in the playlists. I've got a Dreamer Design playlist, so you'll be able to see them all in there. And also, if you've never ordered from Dreamer Designs before, and you would like to give them a go, then do look in my description box below for the link, which is an affiliated code. And if you order through that link, you will get 15% off your first purchase. And I also get a little bit of a payment back from Dreamer Designs if you do so. So thank you very much if you do decide to. Um, I'm not sure if Elation is still in stock, but Anne-Marie Bone does um, have a few designs in there to have a look at. And some are quite similar to Elation with the trees and the different colours dotted around. They are confetti heavy. Every comment I think I've had from people about Anne-Marie Bone diamond paintings have all agreed with me. Um, so if you don't like confetti, then stay away from those ones and maybe have a look at a different sort of design from them. If you don't know what confetti is, you're quite new to diamond painting and you're thinking, confetti, what on earth does that mean? That's something you throw at a wedding, isn't it? Well, confetti is when you've got colours dotted about rather than being in a group or an area all together. So if you can see, I'm working on the K symbol. I've got three in a row here and two here. But sometimes um, you get like an area with dense colours, not on this canvas very often but that's the difference and that's what confetti is when it's when the colors are dotted about here there and everywhere there we go so some pictures if you've seen my diamond art club for partners in crime that I'm also working on at the moment, then that one has got more solid colour areas to be able to multiplace. So if you want to see a comparison, do head over to that playlist and you'll be able to see the difference. I'm really lucky that I've got two amazing canvases to work on. I've got a square from Diamond Art Club and a round from Dreamer Designs. And that contrast really is fabulous. I used to only work on one canvas at a time and then I bought two and didn't know which one to start so I started them both and ever since then I've really enjoyed having more than one canvas to work on. So that's probably another habit that I've got myself into. Um, so if I ever do go back to the diamond painting Deutschland, the Josephine wall kits, they are big with loads and loads of colours in them. So it'd be interesting whether I felt I could do two of, well, two canvases 
at the same time. I definitely wouldn't be able to do two of those ones at the same time because I wouldn't have enough storage for all the colours. <laughs> because in those kits, there were about 240, 250 colours. But they are beautiful. And that's a bit like a watercolour type finish with having all of those colours to blend together. They are stunning. So again, if you haven't seen any of my videos on those, then there is a playlist for Diamond Painting Deutschland as well. So lots to catch up on if you're new to my channel. And you may well be if you saw my video announcing the super duper subscriber seasonal summer competition. Woo! <laughs> Uh, I am still so excited about that competition, which is currently open. If you're watching this whip and chat as I'm posting, I opened it on the 1st of August 22 and it will close on the 12th of August 2022. So if you've not seen it, do catch that to be in with a chance of winning that incredible diamond painting from Diamond Art Club. Oh, I can't wait to see who the winner is. Um, yes, yeah, so I might pop that video up in the eye for you to make it easy to find and um, get yourself entered into that one, into the draw. It's free of charge to enter. You just need to be a subscriber and there are a few little easy peasy rules which you'll see on the video. I promise there's nothing onerous in it. And you will have a chance of winning that diamond painting kit. Ooh, I hope you've got your entry in. Oh, so, so excited. So, so, so excited. And I'm just thrilled to be able to say a massive thank you to you all for all your support, your likes, your shares, your subscribes, just comments, everything that you give to me. I wanted to pay back. I believe in karma. I believe in um, one good turn deserves another and all of that. And I really, really wanted to give people an opportunity to get a fabulous kit. So that is what the competition is all about. Ah. And as well as doing, um, I call that like the big seasonal competition. I'm also thinking of like small giveaways and things like that. That won't be on um, a video of its own. It will be sort of interspersed between other videos and things. So do keep watching because small little giveaways and little treats and things like that will be offered on some videos. Not everyone because, you know, I'm not made of money. <laughs> no, it's just, um, you know, little surprises to keep us all interested and excited. And I hope that you really have fun with those. That's what I hope. Little, like little, oh, moments while you're watching. Little treats. Hmm. Right, so I think that's sort of the housekeeping type information for you. Um, I don't think I need to tell you about anything else particularly so we'll go on to my chat about Whitby. So we arrived at Whitby, we took Monty with us as well so there was my husband, myself and Monty the dog all in the car. We got parked up and we arrived I would say late afternoon um, and it was busy. It was before school holidays as well, so I wasn't expecting it to be that busy. But I guess if people don't have school-aged children, they probably had the same idea of having some time away before the school holidays. 
So anyway, we managed to find a car parking spot, which was great because we just wanted to leave the car there and not really move and drive anywhere else. I'm just gonna have a slip of tea. Cheers, everybody. Yeah, so we got there late afternoon. We booked a cottage and we knew that it was central. So we found our car par parking spot, paid the car park, and you know, it was dead easy. Um, my husband paid for the space on his phone and that meant that we didn't have to go back to the car for anything. We could just renew the car parking on the app. Ooh, it was brilliant. Um, so we got all our bags out of the car and we headed into the centre of Whitby Old Town. So you may not have been to Whitby before. There's sort of two halves of Whitby with a bridge in between. So we parked on the same side that we were staying on and we just had to walk down Church Street and on Church Street there are little alleyways. Now I did take a video of this to show you because it is so cute. So I will play that video for you right now so you can see exactly what I mean. So this is Church Street in Whitby and you wouldn't ever notice it but this is Elder Lane where we put our little cottage to hang. So we go down here through this little old snippet. Isn't it cute? And I've been looking up history of these cottages and we think that they've been here since 1822. We think that's the date. We couldn't get an exact date on these. But um, uh, through this little passage, so it goes from Church Street down to the street over here. And going back up the other way is an old this is the cottage where we're staying with its beautiful little pink door. Isn't that cute? And Whitby is full of all of these little surprise alleyways and if you don't wander down you wouldn't ever think that things like those little gorgeous cottages were down there. Oh, I was so thrilled with where we were staying. It had a gorgeous front door. Did you see it? It was um, it was a bit like that colour, actually. It was like a pinky lilac. Oh, and inside was so modern for such an old little cottage. Um, so yeah, I was I was just thrilled with it. And we what we did, we we dropped the bags down, and um had a quick refreshment and then we headed out into Whitby with Monty to give him a walk. And because we were so central, it was just easy peasy. It was really good. It was such a fabulous base to have. So we dropped the bags, we headed out over the bridge into the other part of Whitby to get some, believe it or not, fish and chips. It had to be done being by the seaside and um, we'd heard of a very, very famous fish and chip restaurant. Now we knew we wouldn't be able to eat in the restaurant with having Monty with us and we absolutely didn't want to leave Monty in the cottage by himself so he had to be with us. He's part of the family. Anybody with animals will know um, what I mean by that. So he was on his holidays too. Couldn't leave him in the house took him with us. So we walked past the very famous fish and chip restaurant there. Guess what the name is? Magpies. <laughs> so really, we should have got our fish and chips from Magpies with me having a channel called Stone Magpie. And you know, I think I must have completely switched off by this point, being on holiday, because I didn't even get a photo of myself standing outside a Magpie's Fish and Chip restaurant. Isn't that terrible? <laughs> for me, it's a good excuse to go back to Whitby, just for that photo. 
I didn't want to cheat and superimpose myself on a stock photo. <laughs> oh, there's Monty scratching away. Monty, sit down. You know, he always wants to join in, doesn't he? He wants to tell you about his holiday too. So anyway, we got to Magpies and there was such a large queue outside. So yes, they have their... So Magpies have a restaurant as well as a takeaway part of their business. And everywhere was queues. People were queuing out of the door for these Magpies fish and chips. So I thought, well, do you know, I'm not waiting in a queue. <laughs> I was a bit hungry, <laughs> a bit hangry, <laughs> as they say. So we carried on walking along the side of the Whitby front because there's lots and lots of different places where you can get fish and chips, of course. And we came to a little stall quite close to the end near um, like a covered bandstand so we ordered, there was nobody waiting there, perfect. So we ordered our fish and chips. Honestly, I think they probably went to catch this fish and cook it for us because we seemed to be waiting there for ages. <laughs> it was probably a good 15 minutes, <laughs> which is quite a long time for a fast takeaway. You know, fish and chips are supposed to be like a fast food, aren't they? Anyway. They've probably cooked them very fresh. They were absolutely delicious, I have to say. So well worth the wait, but we probably could have waited at Magpies. Anyway, I sound really moany, but I'm not. They were lovely fish and chips. Anyway, as we were waiting for our fish and chips, we could see these seagulls eyeing us. Now, I haven't been to the seaside for a little bit and you forget the size of seagulls. But I think Whitby seagulls are thugs. They are massive. They are really solidly built. So yes, they're quite intimidating, I have to say. So I was thinking, well, we're gonna get our fish and chips. And it says on signs everywhere in Whitby, not to feed the seagulls. Stop attacks, do not feed the seagulls. So you can't miss that. Like, no, you're not gonna get any of our fish and chips, mate. We're not gonna be feeding you. So you can look at us all you like with those beady eyes of yours. You know, we're used to it with Monty. <laughs> we can be cruel to be kind, because that's what it is, you know. So when the fish and chips were given to us, they were given to us in like a tray, like a cardboard tray with a lid. So we put all our salt on and our ketchup on and, you know, mm, the tummy was rumbling. I mean, I was nearly beside it at this point. I was just like, mm, I need something to eat. Now my husband had Monty's lead. So Monty and my husband set off to walk to the bench where we'd sort of said, oh yes, that's a nice place to sit. Well, this seagull and its mates swooped down to Nick and made such a noise. It was absolutely deafening. And I heard him make sort of a, it's kind of not a very manly squeak. <laughs> yeah, sort of noise. <laughs> yeah, and I thought, oh, was that my husband? <laughs> But no, I was properly shocked by the speed that these seagulls came down. So I did a quick U-turn and headed back to this stall and hid under the sort of overhang that it had. And the, the guys behind the counter were shouting, close the lid, close the lid. So I quickly snapped the lid shut and turned around and they shouted, go to the bandstand, they won't bother you in there. So Nick headed over to the bandstand and I sheepishly walked across with my lid down, hoping that these seagulls weren't going to dive bomb me, which they didn't. But as I got to the bandstand, there was one big one stood on the steps, like the doorway up to this bandstand. It was all open edges. Um, so if you imagine like a gazebo, but solidly built with a, with a top on, 
and steps up the front to get into it. It was like that. And there was this massive seagull stood there on the steps like a bouncer. <laughs> and he was as solidly built as a bouncer if ever I've seen one. Oh, so that was a little bit intimidating too, but he let me in. <laughs> and um, we sat and ate our fish and chips whilst being beadily watched by these seagulls. So we didn't get to sit on the bench looking over the sea. We were sat under the bandstand with an eye on these seagulls. Yeah, so that was a little bit of drama to initiate ourselves into the seagulls of Whitby. Nick sort of looked at me in dismay when we sat there and he said, they've taken the tail of my fish. And that actually, that cheeky seagull that um, got into his fish box had actually taken about quarter of his fish away. <laughs> so quick and so aimful, I don't know if that's a word, but it aimed for that perfectly and managed to get quarter of Nick's fish. Oh, astonishing. So as we were sat there watching, I mean, people were walking by with food all the time. And, you know, the seagulls kept... One lady had an ice cream. Well, you can't cover an ice cream cone. So they kept sort of going down trying to nick a bit of that. Yeah, it was a bit of an eye-opener. Cheeky, cheeky birds. And... Um, so we managed to finish our fish and chips. We did enjoy them. We were ready for them and they were fabulous. And so we then went for a little walk along the front, to walk them off a little bit because, you know, fish and chips whew, before as tea time. Yeah, we needed a little walk afterwards. So we did. We did a little walk along the front just to see what was happening and Got a nice cup of tea and things like that. So it was lovely, really, really lovely. We headed back to the cottage and I loved these little alleyways and I wanted to do a little bit of research. So we spent the evening researching old maps of Whitby and things like that to try and find out the date that the cottage was built and any sort of history that we could find about it. Um, so we poured over old maps and things. I might have saved one as a photo. If I did, I will pop it up on screen for you so you can see it too. Um, and we think we dated the cottage to about 1822-ish. Because it's quite hard to date. We were looking at all sorts of dates, but obviously the maps in those days didn't really detail streets and things we could see that they'd sort of drawn an area but whether that was cottages or just the alleyway or what we're not sure but it was such a sweet little house but I mean you've seen now the alleyway you wouldn't think that there was cottages down there and it was three stories high really good size rooms for the age and I don't know if Maybe it was a fisherman's cottage, something like that. Maybe more than one family lived there at one time because it was a good size. Anyway, I love things like that. So I had lots of fun looking online at that. Just going to these C's. And do a few more. Yeah, so the bedroom was at the top of the house. So from the windows, you could see rooftops. And I love rooftops. I've actually got a watercolour painting of Whitby um, that we bought one time when we were there years ago. And there's something about those terracotta roofs that they're just fabulous. And so from the bedroom, you could open up the window and see all of these roofs. Now, I have done a little video, so you might be able to see what I mean, because 
The next morning, wow, we were woken up early. <laughs> I will put that video on and show you what woke us up the next day. There was absolutely no getting away from it. That racket was all day long. It was happening till quite late at night as well. So, yeah, I think if you live in Whitby, you probably get used to it. I live in a very, very, very quiet village. <laughs> I might hear chickens occasionally. You've probably heard them on my videos too. Sometimes the children in the neighbourhood they're laughing and playing and that's it. We don't really get any other noise. I'm maybe Monty barking every now and again. <laughs> so to wake up to that racket was just like, what? <laughs> anyway, on the positive side, because you know, I like to try and see the positive side of everything. It meant that we had a longer day because we were awake so early so we could spend a bit more time exploring <laughs> so the next day what we decided to do was do a beach walk with Monty and walk to the next sort of I don't know if it's a village I wouldn't I think it's probably a village rather than a town called Sands End and Dogs, at certain parts of the year, dogs are not allowed on all of the beach. So there's parts where you need to come off the beach and walk along the promenade. But you can actually get all the way along by doing that with a dog. So we did. We headed out. We walked past some very cute little beach huts, which honestly, they're like painted sheds. I took a picture of those. You'll see those. Um, and they are, there's loads of them all the way along the promenade and people, I think you can hire some, people do own them as well, so they do keep them nicely painted and then if they want to be there for the day and things, they've got somewhere to get changed and have a cup of tea and things like that, so yeah. So we walked past those. And then we were allowed to go on the beach with Monty. There's like signs to say no dogs on this part of the beach. And, you know, I think that's quite a good thing. Because if you've got young children or if you're nervous of dogs or, you know, then you, you can choose that part of the beach where, you know, dogs are not going to be running around bothering you. So I think it's a good system. So we headed down onto the beach and Monty absolutely loved it. Um, I did do a little bit of videoing of him because he just looked like he was so happy. He was um, chasing pebbles and all sorts of things. The tide was out, so we had lots of beach to run through. It was quite breezy and on the video it sounds quite like we were going to be blown away at any second. So I'm not sure if I'll put that video on for you because, you know, it is quite loud, but it wasn't really that bad when we were there. I'll see if I can find a part of the video with Monty on so you can see him having lots and lots of fun. But if I, if I can't find one without any wind on, then I won't put it on because I don't want to hurt your ears and, you know, especially if you're wearing headphones so yeah we were walking along there and I said to Nick that I wanted to find some sea glass and he was like what on earth is sea glass never heard of it I can't believe he'd never heard of sea glass so I wonder if you've heard of sea glass before 
So I explained to him what it was. So sea glass is little bits of broken glass that have been left on the beach and swept into sea, tumbled around for however long, and then left on the sand as it's a bit, I suppose it's a bit like a sandstone finish. You know, it's all of the edges have been roughened off and it's got sort of um, a rough coat, not coating, because it's, it's like the glass has been sanded. <laughs> um, and you can get some really, really pretty pieces. So we were walking along and yes, I found a piece. So I showed it to Nick so he knew what he was looking for and we walked along the whole beach looking for it. I need to show you what we ended up with. Honestly, I am so pleased with this haul that we found on the beach. I thought I might find one or two pieces and I did have a perfect jar for it all. Look, I've got the lovely jar. Look at all of this that we found in different colours. I'll open it up so you can see. Look at all of that. Look at these colours. That is amazing. That one isn't as rough as it should be, really. We probably probably should have left that. So I hope uh, let's tip it out on my hand. So have you ever seen sea glass before? That is what I would like to know little bits of glass that have been tumbled around in the sea. Look at that one. And aren't they pretty? I love it. I just absolutely love it. So I was thrilled to find such a massive amount. Again, that's one that we probably should have left a bit longer. Still got some sharper edges on. If we go back to Whitby, I will throw this one back. Look, we've got orangey colours. So, yes, and have the perfect little pot to keep it all in. So I was so thrilled to find all that. So now I've got this to keep on my windowsill as a memento of our holiday in Whitby. <laughs> Now, another memento of Whitby that I got, if you remember a whip and chat that I talked about going to Whitby, you may have heard me talk about the Whitby glass shop. Well, my nana used to take me to the Whitby glass shop every time we went to Whitby. She used to take me as a little girl and one treat for me on holiday was that she would buy me a Whitby Lucky Duck. I'll pop a photo on the screen now so you can see the entrance to the Whitby glass shop. And oh, it was such a treat to go in again this time because it just gave me such a lovely gooey feeling, reminded me of my Nana who sadly passed away years ago. And I was the only one in the shop, so I said to the owner, would you mind if I took a video for my YouTube channel to show my viewers your wonderful shop? And she agreed for me to do that, and here's the clip now. So here we are in the Whitby shop where the Lucky Ducks are all on display. Aren't they pretty? It just reminds me so much of my Nana when she used to bring me here as a little girl. Oh, I just love it. And the shop itself has lots of different choices of different glass products all the way through to a back room here. And there are all sorts of little animals to choose from as well. Oh. So if you come to Whitby, you must come to this little glass shop and have a look and treat yourself to one of these little glass animals and a lucky duck. It's just got to be done. And I'm going to choose a few now and bring them home with me. I had to, of course, get some little treats and look what I've got, look. 
They are so cute. I got four lucky ducks and here is the explanation of what the Lucky Ducks are all about. The Lucky Duck story are small handmade glass ducks in various transparent colours and have been made and sold in Whitby Glass for 64 years. I didn't get one of the originals, just to point that out. <laughs> Whitby Glass is a small group of artists and craftsmen working in glass here in the North East. At the workbench within the shop, visitors may see the Lucky Ducks actually being made in 12 jewel-like colours which match the gemstones considered lucky for each month of the year. Whitby Lucky Ducks are the original Lucky Ducks and are protected by copyright and were first made for friends in the theatrical professions who always carry an amulet or charm with them on the stage or in front of the cameras. Since then, tens of thousands have been sold holiday makers actors, film and TV personalities, and to all people in all walks of life, the famous and the man and woman in the street. They go to all parts of the world and are carried and believed in by bingo, pools and racing fans, motorist explorers and students facing examinations everywhere. Many drivers will not go out on the road without their lucky duck. Lucky Ducks have become famous and have been featured on BBC and ITV television, BBC radio and newspapers and magazines everywhere. Hundreds of letters have been received from Lucky Duck owners telling us of their winnings and good fortune. A selection of these were investigated by a national newspaper and all found to be completely genuine. Every Lucky Duck is individually handmade by craftsmen and are available in a variety of styles, including birthday colours. Please contact us for mail order inquiries. And that is the address. OK, so of course I got four of these, buying four of the ducks. And I'd like to show you what I chose. So... It's like a little treasure in this cardboard box and inside is a little wrapped duck. Look, oh, here is the, one of them I chose. I've never seen glitter Lucky Ducks before, so I was quite excited to see these. This is, you know, elevated from when I was a little girl. So this is like a purple duck. I know it probably looks black on screen, but it's purple with glitter. Woo! A glamour duck, if ever I saw one. Oh, I want to be able to show you them on screen. Let's see if I can keep that right there. And in this one... Ah, now then, this one is a harlequin duck. So it's a translucent duck with, look, if you turn it over, you can see different colours in the duck. So depending on how you're looking at it, the colours are in its tail or in its neck. It's actually really clever. It's painted on the bottom, but it shines through the glass into different areas. Isn't that clever? I love that. So he's the Harlequin duck. <laughs> then I chose, oh, this one is mine. <laughs> this one is the October duck. So pink. For October now, it used to be like opalescent colours. Now they do this baby pink. So I've never had a baby pink one before. And that is my birthstone colour from the Whitby Glass Shop. So there's my October duck. One more to show you. I'm hoping actually not to put this paper on my canvas. Ooh, I don't want any catastrophes. Don't do this at home. Don't put tissue anywhere near your sticky surface on your canvas. And another glitter duck, but this time a blue. Look, look at this handsome guy. And he's got like um, 
glitter, but also love heart sequin glitter too. So he is a very handsome duck. So there we are. They are the lucky ducks that I got from the glass shop in Whitby. And I'm going to carefully pass the lump all up and pop them in their little box. So I am thrilled to have these lucky ducks. And I mentioned about giveaways at the beginning of this video. And I am going to be giving away one of these lucky ducks to a lucky viewer a lucky subscriber, you do need to be subscribed to the channel to be in with a chance of winning one of these fabulous ducks. And I think it's probably gonna be the purple one. So if you would like a chance of winning the purple glitter lucky duck, then leave a comment below and all you need to do is put in the comment lucky duck and I will respond with a number and that will be drawn at random and I will contact you if you are the winner of that giveaway. So what do you think? I think they are super and as I say, they hold such sentimental value for me. I can't say that they will bring you fortunes in the pools, the lottery or anything else. That is something that may happen or may not happen, let's put it that way. Um, however, just to own one of these fabulous little glass ducks, I hope that um, you love them too. I had such fun choosing them as well. Like I say, never seen the glitter ones before and there's so many to choose from. There was even a little bride and groom. Can you imagine? Oh, and what, lo what lovely sentiment behind a lucky duck for somebody who's just starting out in a marriage. <laughs> Probably need it. I'm allowed to say that. I've been married for 26 years, so yeah. <laughs> anyway, let, I digress. <laughs> Look and hard work. <laughs> oh, I am naughty. And I can see I've got a bit of glitter there. Oh, no. Oh, no. Ah, oh, I can get it off. Let, get, let me get my tweezers. I should never have opened those out on my canvas. It was very silly of me and I do not recommend that you do that at home. But I was too excited to show you them there. I've got it, got it, so we're fine. So on the second evening, we decided to get a meal and take it back to the cottage and eat it in the cottage with a nice bottle of red wine. So we decided to go Mexican. Now, this little place, we found in our last stay there, when Ben was only young, he was only, um, it was before we had Monty even. And there is a bit of a story, of course, <laughs> to do with this little Mexican place we found. When we were there previously, we all love Mexican food. So we looked up on TripAdvisor about what the, Mex the best Mexican is in Whitby and this place came up top. So we were all excited about going to try this place out. We rang them on the day and asked if they had a table available and they sounded quite um, confused by our request, which we were like, oh, okay. Well, have you got a table available for us? And they said, well, yes, we can't, but we can book them. Well, yes. We have a, ta a table um, and so I said oh great can I book it for three people please so they sort of said well yes okay <laughs> so we got I'm not gonna say dressed up because we weren't dressed up to the nines you know you buy the seaside but you know we changed Nick had a shirt on and I had a nice outfit on we weren't like dressed dressed up 
we got to this place and it's a takeaway with just, you know, a plastic table inside where people sit and wait. So it wasn't a restaurant that I booked a table in. <laughs> we booked a table in a takeaway. Oh my goodness, we were a little bit embarrassed, but we didn't want to show it. So they said, oh, are you the people that rang up earlier? And we were like, yes, that's right. Uh, they, so they said, OK, well, here you can sit at this table. And honestly, we ordered, well, we were given the takeaway menu to look at. <laughs> and um, we ordered our meal and they said, if you want to have a drink, we've got cans of pop like can of lemonade, can of Coke, something like that. Um, or if you want a, a, a drink, you can go to the pub across the road and bring it in here if you want to. So we were just like, oh no, a can of lemonade is fine. Thank you very much, you know. Polite English people, that's what we are. <laughs> so we sat and we had our meal. I mean, it came in a takeaway container so we sat there in our you know nice outfits in a takeaway <laughs> drinking our drink from a can and eating out of a takeaway container <laughs> as our meal out but I tell you what TripAdvisor was right it was fantastic food and that was the main thing we really enjoyed our food and the people there were so lovely they were really gracious they were you know they were fine about it and we sat and had a chat with them whilst you know in between customers so yeah it worked out fine <laughs> it was just a little bit embarrassing at the beginning anyway nick and i decided to get another takeaway from them and take it back to the cottage this time and eat it there so we did that and that was lovely. We watched telly and had a nice bottle of wine and yeah, really relaxed evening with the seagulls caterwauling in the background. <laughs> um, and then the next day we decided to have another little wander out um, around Whitby. Nick had been booked for a gig so he needed to come back for that um, so we just wandered around this, the town centre really and did a little bit of shopping and you know that's about it really we, we went and had our lunch in a really nice cafe that allowed dogs to go in so that was fabulous and I got a really cute picture of Monty with his head between our legs and um, looking up at us with his big eyes asking if he could have something to eat too so that was our time in Whitby yeah it was a really lovely break and just walking oh I, oh no 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 I've missed out the abbey <laughs> god it's one of the most famous land marks of Whitby and I've missed out the story oh my goodness so on one of the days and I can't even remember what day it was now it might have been the day yes it was the day we went to the Whitby glass shop so that day we also went to the end of Church Street and there are 199 steps up to the famous Whitby Church and Whitby Abbey at the top there. I did do a brief video. I don't know again if that would be too windy to show. I will have a look at it. And if not, <laughs> you might hear me huffing and puffing up the steps <laughs> up to see the Whitby Church and Whitby Abbey at the top. So we're going ahead. Oh, I think I'm about halfway up. So forgive me for puffing and panting. <laughs> I'm not as fit as I thought. But here is the view of the other side of Whitby from oh, this point on the stairs. Right. It's a good excuse to take a video and have a little rest for a minute. <sighs> okay. Yeah. A bit further to go. Okay. 
I'm getting to the top now. Well, go on, I'll have that as well, look it. Well, he said to me... Thankfully, I don't think my knees would have taken much more. <laughs> At the top of the steps we have Whitby Church with all of the old gravestones which are very interesting to read when you get to the top. There's the view and we will see the old abbey very soon. It's there in the distance. So there's the abbey from a distance from the field opposite and this pathway leads to the brewery. Oh, I think it needs a trip there. Luckily, there is like um, a little coffee place. So once we got to the top and found the coffee place, we could revive ourselves with a nice drink. And we did have a cake actually. And then we carried on our exploring and um, I've got a picture of the Abbey from the field beyond to try and get as much of the Abbey in as possible so that you can see this incredible building. It is fabulous and it is celebrated with Gothic weekends and things like that. Whitby Hole, I think it's two Gothic weekends a year where people go dressed up as gothics and enjoy the atmosphere of the abbey there. And it's all related to Dracula as well. So really, really famous place in Whitby and it's absolutely stunning. And because you're high up on the hillside there, you can see all of the old town from the opposite side of the bridge from the top there. It's just beautiful such a great place to go and really um you know free and easy just really relaxing there's the harbor they do the boat trips we didn't go on one with having monty but they do like um sightseeing boat trips one of which is a pirate ship which is great the kids love that and you can see them all stood outside um, where they sell the tickets for the boat trip and they're all having their picture taken with the pirate. <laughs> it's, it's fun, really good fun. So there's the harbour side, there's the town, there's the old abbey, the church, the town, the amusements, of course, at the ed edge. You can get ice creams, and we did. And also, like, the fish stalls, along the edge as well, where you can get cockles and mussels, all sorts of things like that in the little tubs and you just pick them out with your little um, fork that you get and you can eat them at the side of the seaside. Really old fashioned seaside place. But busy, you know, there are a lot of people around I think if you go completely out of season, it probably wouldn't be as busy, but it, it may well be. Might have to go maybe in October, November and see what it's like at that time of year. I mean, we, we have done day trips there before quite often. As I say, only been about an hour away from where we live. Um, but it feels different when you're staying somewhere. It's got a different feel to it. So we all really enjoyed it. And if you enter the giveaway, you can have a little piece of Whitby in your home too with the gorgeous Lucky Ducks. So I was just having a quick look at the time there. I think this video has run over time. I'm so sorry, I know I, I do go on and on and on a little bit, but I did want to tell you the story. I wanted to share the, my um, 
experience of Whitby because I know some people may not get the chance to visit and may also be really interested in the old towns of the UK because we do have some fabulous, fabulous places to visit in the UK. And if you are planning a trip over here, you may well have wanted to see a little snapshot and see if you would be interested to visit there too. So I really hope that you've enjoyed it. Now, this week, I have a works night out with my work colleagues who are ma mainly young men. <laughs> um, so I will be going out for dinner and to the bar with my work colleagues. And that will probably be my next whip and chat. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> I hope you enjoy watching that video. So please do subscribe, leave comments, send me likes and do enter both the competition and the giveaway. Until next time, enjoy your own diamond painting. Take care everyone, bye. Here's my progress with the Elation diamond painting so far. I didn't even see those little tree trunks creating the depth.